Today, we're taking a look at the de Havilland DH-66 Hercules. This was one of a collection of aircraft that helped to shrink the world in the 1920s and 1930s with the establishment of long-distance mail services. Airmail had been experimented with as early as 1911, but most of these early services were brief, lasting only a couple of months, if that. It wasn't until after the First World War that long-term airmail services finally became established, though even then a lot of it was limited to either domestic or short-distance international routes. This was partly due to the range limitations of many aircraft at the time, but mostly due to concerns about cost, and, of course, the not-so-quiet lobbying from various persons interested in the established rail and naval mail routes. However, the rapid development of engine technology, and that of multi-engine aircraft in general, meant that long-distance mail routes across remote regions were rapidly becoming feasible and this was where the aeroplane was most sorely needed. One of the first of these more remote routes was the Desert Air Mail Service, which was opened by the RAF in 1921. This ran air mail between Cairo and Baghdad, and there were long-term hopes for the route to be extended all the way to India as well. Between 1921 and 1925, this route was faithfully flown by aircraft such as the de Havilland DH-9A and the Vickers Vernon, but when Imperial Airways took over the Desert Air Mail Service that year, a replacement was needed. Not only were the DH-9As and Vernons wearing out fast, but Imperial Airways wanted something larger, more up-to-date, and more reliable. They drew up a specification requiring an aircraft to be built with multiple engines, with ample reserves of power for emergencies, and it was to be built with tropical conditions and rough landing strips in mind. Unsurprisingly, de Havilland proposed a replacement themselves, not wishing to lose such a valuable customer, and after a review, their proposal was accepted, with an order being placed for five aircraft. Powered by a trio of 420 horsepower Bristol Jupiters, the DH-66 was Geoffrey de Havilland's most ambitious design since the Amiens and Oxford bombers of the First World War. It was also a significant upgrade in every respect, as the company had learned valuable lessons with other aircraft designs over the previous seven years. Owing to a shortage of high-quality spruce, and various considerations that wooden spars and ribs tended to deteriorate quickly in tropical conditions, the DH-66 was primarily constructed from steel tubing. This was a notable shift for de Havilland, who had not yet jumped on the trend of metal airframes that was becoming firmly established by the middle of the decade, and indeed it was a trend he would continue to resist, with this being one of the few exceptions. Within the large steel framework, two plywood box structures would form the main cabin and rear baggage compartment. In classic 1920s style, the two pilots sat in an open cockpit, as enclosed canopies were still considered a hindrance at the time, and in the main cabin there was enough room for a radio operator, seven passengers, and up to 465 cubic feet of mail. It's unclear when construction of the prototype began, but it was complete by the beginning of autumn in 1926. The name Hercules had been selected through a competition held by the Meccano magazine in June, and it was with this name printed on the side, though some sources do dispute this, that the aircraft first flew on September the 30th. The only change required from the flight trials was to have ailerons fitted to all four wings, to improve lateral control, and following this, the aircraft was transferred to Imperial Airways, and it left England for Cairo on December the 20th. The end of the year marked the transfer of the Desert Air Mail Service from military to civilian control, and this was marked by a historic flight that was completed by the second de Havilland Hercules. This aircraft completed a route that took it from Croydon in England, all the way out to the city of Delhi in India, after which it was then named the city of Delhi as well, inheriting the title of an older de Havilland DH-34 that had been lost two years earlier. Commercial operations officially began on January the 7th, 1927, with the first Hercules completing a route between Basra and Cairo, and all five aircraft were delivered and operational by the end of March. Like all other Imperial Airways aircraft at the time, they were individually named. You had the city of Cairo, the city of Delhi, 
City of Baghdad, City of Jerusalem, and the City of Tehran. Thanks to their sturdy design, the Hercules aircraft managed remarkably well in the harsh, unforgiving conditions of the Middle East, and because of this, in 1928, they caught the attention of Western Australian Airways, who operated aircraft over equally harsh, unforgiving, and slightly more spider-infested conditions on the other side of the world. After being given permission to open a new air service between Perth and Adelaide, the company selected the DH-66 as the obvious aircraft to carry their passengers, and an order was placed for four Hercules later that year. West Australian Airways also made a request for several modifications to make the aircraft more suitable for their long-distance service. The pilot's cockpit was now covered by an enclosed cabin with sliding windows, Seating capacity was increased to 14, and a tailwheel was installed to replace the old-school tail skit. In the end, this final modification was removed, as the tailwheels failed to survive repeated rough landings, and the tail skid, though rudimentary, was actually found to be both more comfortable and safer. The Australian service was inaugurated on the 29th of May, Two aircraft, the City of Perth and the City of Adelaide, completed the 1,450-mile route in just over 14 hours, carrying a combined total of 21 passengers and cargo. The two other airframes were held in reserve, but less than a year later, one of them would be sold to Imperial Airways to replace the loss of the City of Tehran, which had come to grief in a non-fatal force landing. Four more DH-66s were built after the Australian order, all of these were the modified type with the enclosed cabin, and this modification was also added to the remaining aircraft from the original production order. The 11th and final DH-66 was delivered in January of 1930. Though they were not built in large numbers, as was the case with many commercial aircraft of the time, the de Havilland Hercules tallied quite a few achievements. The 6th aircraft to join Imperial Airways would open the first official extension of its air routes to India in 1929. Then, in 1931, the Hercules would assist in completing the first official airmail service from Australia back to England, and later on that year the same aircraft would complete survey flights down into South Africa, foreshadowing the next major expansion of the Empire air route. This particular aircraft, now named the City of Cape Town, would go on to become the starring attraction of Sir Alan Cobham's travelling air show when it came to the area. A couple of the Hercules aircraft would also find themselves as pioneers of aerial pest control. The City of Basra and the City of Jodhpur both conducted so-called dusting flights to help combat swarms of locusts in various parts of Africa. As the city of Jodhpur was wrecked when trying to take off from a boggy swamp, an exercise in futility if there ever was one, the city of Basra would do the bulk of this work, dropping hundreds of pounds of horrifically dangerous arsenic-based powders over the course of 1935. Remarkably, the last operational use of the DH-66 occurred during the Second World War, Though the majority had either crashed or had been retired by this time, two Hercules had been sold to the South African Air Force back in 1934, and in the early stages of the war they would fly as military couriers. A third aircraft was also in South African possession at this time, but it was not actually flown. Instead, it was reduced to spares in order to keep the courier aircraft running for as long as possible. This they did until finally being withdrawn from service and scrapped in 1943. Despite being successful, the DH-66 was not immediately followed by a successor. In fact, de Havilland mostly stuck with light aircraft throughout the 1920s and 1930s. It would not be until the mid-1930s that a new transport of more than two engines was developed, the DH-86 though by this point its construction methods put it at an immediate disadvantage over the competition. But the story of the DH-86 is one for another day. As always, thank you all so much for watching, and a big thank you of course to the patrons. Once again, this video is going up whilst I'm away, so this list can't be updated yet, but rest assured, as soon as I am back, we'll include all of our newest members. A special thank you, of course, to our Wing Commander tier patrons, our highest tier members. 
I'm hopefully going to be expanding my plans for Patreon in the next month or so, time and plans permitting, which should hopefully see some more stuff for all members. I just need to finish up some back-end stuff and we should be good to go. But that is an update that I shall give you all later. As always, thank you all so much for watching and I'll catch you all next time. Goodbye.